morning, I'm on my way to the Tesla Service Center in Maplewood, Minnesota. That's just on the, on the north side of St. Paul in the Twin Cities area. I'm driving today with no heat in the car. And so the reason for the service center visit is to get the heat pump or and or super manifold or octa valve repaired or replaced in this car. Now my Tesla Model Y is a 2020 Model Y long range. I purchased it new in June of 2020 and I've put 58,600 miles in this vehicle so far. To this point I've had no major service issues or needs with the vehicle. Did have a, a warranty claim for the right window uh, here in the front seat that had a little bit of a clicking noise as it, as it went up and so we did have the motor assembly replaced on that, but that was under warranty. That was just under 50,000 miles. So the reason that I noticed the heat pump was going out, A, was the car started blowing cold air, but prior to that, on the drive home this weekend from a trip to Northern Minnesota, I stopped at the Duluth Supercharger and I saw, as I finished charging, got back in the car, a message on the screen. The message said, climate control system requires service cabin heating or cooling is limited or unavailable. At that point, I didn't have any changes to the climate control that I could notice. I did notice a little bit of a, of a noise coming from the front area in the vehicle where the heat pump is located. Maybe just a slight, like a grinding noise when you can hear an engine running, but it didn't sound awful at that time. Uh, but with the service required message, I suspected the heat pump might be failing on the car. Or at least it came loose from its mount and there's something in the fan assembly or motor assembly that was rubbing as it was operating. So when I was driving home from the supercharger, about two hours into the drive or half hour from my destination, I got the message again on the screen. And then this time I did hear an audible whirring noise coming from the front area that, where the heat pump is located. And it sounded a lot more noticeable. I could hear it this time from inside the cabin where it was actually making a very loud noise. And so I immediately turned the temperature down. I had to leave the fan running or the windscreen or windshield because that provides defrost. So the window doesn't fog up. And you can see that's how I'm operating it right now. Uh, with just very low fan, I have it on low setting and I had it selected to the window only. And I also turned the seat heater on to medium setting just to provide some warmth because on that drive home, the temperature was about two degrees Celsius. And so it's very noticeably cold here inside the cabin. Uh, that was Sunday, today's Wednesday. So that was three days ago. When I got home, I did put a request in to test the service through the app on the phone and the response is very good. Uh, that Sunday evening, it's about maybe 10 o'clock at night, I did receive a response back from them with a preliminary quote. Uh, the quote then was finalized on Monday morning and I had the chance to approve the quote and schedule service. When I opened the quote up, I did have some sticker shock. I noticed that it was just over $2,200, about $2,300. And that was a quote to replace the heat pump the super manifold, and then the labor involved to pull out the current assembly and, and install uh, new products. And so immediately, uh, wondering if all of that was necessary, immediately messaged back and said, you know, hey, is this all required? Do I need to replace both of the components? Do we know that they're bad at this point? And the response back that I received was, that they needed to have both parts available to do the service in case they were needed. So I don't know if I'll have a replacement of both the heat pump and super manifold today. We'll see how that goes once I get to the service center and they're able to pull it out and diagnose that. So worst case scenario, going into this expecting about $2,300 in repair. Now the reason I am getting this repair done now uh, rather quickly is because it's the middle of winter here in Wisconsin the outside air temperature today on this drive has been between zero and two degrees Celsius. So it's right around the freezing mark and it's uh, very cool, very chilly here in the cabin. You can see I'm wearing gloves. I'm concerned not only for my own comfort 
as I drive the car, but also for comfort of my occupants or passengers. Uh, if we do need to travel or take any road trips for the rest of the winter, and, and then coming into the summer, we'll need air conditioning as well. So it's really not an optional repair. I feel like I need to get this uh, functional and functional soon. The other component why I wanted to get this repaired soon is because not only does the heat pump supply heating and climate control to the cabin, but it also conditions the battery, brings it to an optimal temperature for uh, discharge and recharging. And so I wanted to make sure that I got that prepared so that my range wasn't adversely affected and battery longevity wasn't adversely affected by operating the battery outside of its normal or, or best operating temperatures uh, for extended periods of time. So, uh, so really just wanted to get this done soon. Don't know what it's going to cost at this point until we get there and they pull it apart. So with that, we're just gonna run to the uh, service center. We've got about 34 minutes, 36 miles to go to get there. We'll check in there and let you know how it goes. So it does look like the Tesla is going to be ready tomorrow. They think that the repair for this will take overnight. They do have to replace the, both the super manifold and the heat pump itself, which is more than a one day job. So I'm gonna take the loaner car back to Eau Claire and come back in tomorrow, check in with you guys then and let you know how it did. All right, so just a little update here as I wait. I did get a call from the Tesla service representative inside actually just outside so I popped inside and talked with him and he said uh, they found some additional issues with the system all right so a little bit of good news bad news scenario here first the good news that's that the car will be done today it should be done between five and six tonight which is about the time that they go home so I'm just hanging out here waiting to pick up uh, my Model Y and then I'll be heading back to Eau Claire now for the bad news uh, they did find some additional damage in the lines going into the heating cooling system from the super manifold. So you have to replace those lines as well. And unfortunately that's going to make it more expensive than what the initial quote was. So I won't know exactly how much until I go inside after the service is done and settle up the bill. I'll let you guys know what that is. All right, so we got the service done, and unfortunately it happened just after the warranty period expired. So the warranty in the car is good till 50,000 miles, and I've got 58,600 miles. So the total bill for this, for the heat pump, the super manifold, and the lines going into the heating and cooling system in the car was $3,694. Uh, that's labor and parts uh, both. And so unfortunately it was pretty expensive to get that part replaced and in fact the service bay guy told me that of the different types of service that they've seen in Tesla's uh, the heat pump replacement is one of the most expensive maintenance things if it occurs. Um, the other cool thing I want to show you guys just looking out here is when I was in the service area I did ask them if I could get the old heat pump and super manifold so there it is. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with that. I'll probably make a future video just to show uh, what what it is, maybe show it up close a little bit uh, for those that are interested in it. Um, but that's all I have for this video. I'm going to head back to Eau Claire, Wisconsin, get back in this nice warm car, 
and enjoy my ride home. Thanks so much for checking the video out. Uh, I want to give a shout out here to the Tesla service guys. Super professional and they got me in in three days. Got it fixed. Works good as new and back on the road here same day service. I also had a loaner car that I used for the day just to get around uh, so I wasn't uh, incredibly bored uh, just waiting for my car to be fixed. So that's all I have for this video. Just want to thank you guys again and we'll catch you on the next one.